Walk on is a horse where you've given plenty of time to go. Well, we had him. He, he suffered a pretty nasty injury when he won at Aintree as a four-year-old. Um, he, he cut into a tendon and severed part of the tendon, and um, I mean there was no, nothing else we could do but but give him plenty of time. And I mean we did a fair bit of countering last spring just as a to try and strengthen the leg, and then he said he's summer out. Um, he obviously hasn't run for sort of eighteen months, so he got very heavy, but it's coming and. Um, you know, he's doing a lot of steady work at the minute. Um, I mean, we won't rush him back, but um, I'd like to think he'd be ready sort of come December time. I mean, the only twice he's been beaten was at the hands of Zainar as a juvenile, who then, of course, went on to finish third <coughs> in the champion hurdle. So this horse wouldn't probably have to improve too much to be on the fringes of, of champion hurdle class. No, but we'll have to see. You know, he's been off a long time and... Um, I mean, we'll certainly, we're, we're certainly going to stay hurdling this year. I, I don't want to bring him back and have half a season chasing with him. So we'll, we'll just feel our way. And I, I really haven't got a starting point from yet. But I mean, possibly he, he might be a horse that'll be better over a little bit farther than two. But time will tell. But it's, um, it's just great to have him back. And um, let's hope we get a good clear run at him. Karabak uh, developed into a, a very classy staying hurdler, but probably a little bit below his best come the, the big races at Cheltenham and Punchestown in the spring. Yeah, possibly. I mean, he's, a, he's he's a pretty good horse in his day. He 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 doesn't stand an awful lot of racing. Um, there's not a lot of him. But I mean, he he kicked off the season with a, a second to Zainar at Ascot, and then he was second to Big Bucks at Newbury. Um, we had to miss the. We had to miss the um, Cleve hurdle with him. He wasn't quite right at the end of January, and he was possibly slightly flat in the world hurdle. He still finished fourth, but he he got in trouble coming down the hill and then and then ran on again. Um, and I'm sure he'd had enough by then at Punchestown. Mm. But, um, had a good summer at um, Martinstown, and um, he's just back in strong work now. Um, I would like to think he'll either start off at Ascot in the uh, middle of November or Newbury at the Hennessy meeting. So you'd relish another crack at Big Bucks again? Oh, sure, that's what it's all about. I mean, Big Bucks is a super, superb horse, but, you know, you've got to take him on. Mm. I'm Tara. And many of us cross uh, had some high class form in his first season over hurdles, but before we see him back in action again over jumps, he, he may have an important uh, flat assignment. Well, he might. I mean, we tried to get him ready for the Cesarovich, but he had a, he had a long summer break, uh, which did him the world of good. But I just I just couldn't get him back in time. Um, it's a possibility we could go to um, um, Doncaster for the November handicap, or alternatively we'll wait and go straight to the Greatwood. I can't do both, there's only a week between them. But we'll see how he's going, what the ground's like, and I'll have a word with John and we'll decide from there. But you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a good handy, a real good handicap in him. I mean, it augurs well that he ran such a good race in the Tote Sport Trophy, one of the toughest handicaps there is. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we were thrilled with that. And, uh, and then he had no luck at Cheltenham. I mean, he all but got brought down at the, I can't remember if it was the first or the second hurdle. He was 20 lengths behind them and he still tried to get into the race turning in. All weather. It was really good to see Catchit come back and enjoy himself at Kempton. It was. I mean, he um, he ran some very good races last year. I mean, he's, he was second at Cheltenham and third in the Cleave. You can forget the World Hurdle because he uh, he finished on three legs. He split a past on that day, and um, unfortunately, it didn't require surgery. But it, it it meant him stood in his stable for about three months after it. But he's um, he had a good summer out. He has been in the most wonderful form at home. Um, I was trying to make a plan for him. I mean, the, the, the logical starting place was Ascot on the 20th of November, and it seemed an awful long time to wait. So we decided to give him a, a gallop round Kempton the other day. I was really pleased with him. I mean, fast ground, fast tracks, not really ideal, but he, he stayed on all the way up the mm. straight caught to, to get second after the last. The winner broke the track record. He didn't have a hard race doing it, and... Um, you know, he's, he keeps saying as long as he keeps enjoying it, and he certainly is at the minute, then we'll go on with him, you know. Um, and, and I'm sure the step up to two and a half will, will see a, another improvement on him. Now, Solden Lick did well in his first season over hurdles, but 
lost his unbeaten record in the the grade two at Kempton when he thought he wasn't quite right. He did, and he yes, he, he came back. And he was very very quiet, very flat after that. And we 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 just had to leave him. We missed Cheltenham and Aintree with him, and then he started to show me a lot more again, sort of end of March, and we we took him to Cheltenham. He was second to Captain Chris, who's still unbeaten, mm. and I think Hobbsy thinks the world of him. Um, I think we should have finished a little bit closer. He ne we nearly went to the front too soon, and then we we sort of set it up for the other horse. But um, he's another one that's heading for the Great Wood, um, and whether I can get a run into him on the flat first as a pipe mode, I'd like to. Um, but the ground at Newmarket last week was just too quick. But if I, if I could find a handicap with enough cut, then it might just be the ideal sort of pipe opener for him. We'll take a view after the Great Wood as to whether he stays hurdling or we jump a fence. Um, but I just feel he'd, he'd been on the go a long time and I, I think the summer's done him a lot of good. Uh, and I don't think, and I hope we haven't seen the best of him. Of the uh, novice chasers this season, uh, none is more exciting than Medamit, who you could have gone to Exeter last week to take on uh, Celestial Halo, but decided not well, to. Well, I could end. have done, and he's, he's virtually ready, but I just thought it was a, there'd be easier options for him. Um, I just didn't see any point taking Celestial Halo on. I mean, I would have loved to have gone to Kempton the, a couple of days earlier, but the ground was way too quick there, so I, you know we missed that. And he's ready to roll. I'd love a drop of rain just to give him another school before we do set him off, but um, we, we've been happy with him. I mean, he did school once last year, and then we, we decided after the Great Wood that he would stay down the hurdle route, but um, he's been good at home, and it'd be a bit, bit nerve-wracking when he does come out. I mean, in a horse with his sort of rating, you know, it would be lovely if he was able to end up at the festival in the spring over fences. Well, of course it would, but, you know, we'll just have to feel our way mm. and, and see how it goes, but um, in an ideal world, that, so that, would be the, mm. that would be the plan, but, you know... Let's see how he gets on. Now, Stoney's Treasure had a good season in novice company, and he looked on really good terms with himself uh, on the gallop this morning. Yeah, very happy with him. Um, he won twice last year, and then he ran a, probably his best run was in the his last in the, um, the EBF final at Sandown when he finished fifth. And we put him away after that. We got a couple of schools into him, and then he went away back to Sue Welsh's for the summer. Um, he's been schooling very well. He would be off a very interesting mark of, of 1 1 3. And we'll, tr we'll have to utilise that. So he'll either run in one of those restricted novice chases or in a handicap. Um, I would imagine two and a half, two six to start with, and we'll go from there. Late legend, you kept to hurdles last season, but he wasn't quite right after the Coral Cup. He was quite right before the Coral Cup, but there we go. But he, <laughs> he won his two previous. He won very well at Kempton over Christmas and. Yeah, he just he didn't fire at all at Cheltenham. Which anyway, so he he's another one we pulled up stumps with, and um, he's in very good form. Um, he's a horse that uh, probably year on year his work's got progressively better. Mm. Probably typical of Midnight Legends, they're, they're quite laid back, and you know, even in his bumper season he didn't show me a huge amount. And last year was better, and I think this year's better again. Um, he's been schooling ground. We want a bit of rain. He will start off over two and a half um, early November. Certainly got a pretty good win to run ratio mm. over the seasons. And yeah, and, and, and all of his winnings really been on f sort of gallop, flat galloping tracks, but I, I think that's just sort of coincidence. I don't think he necessarily needs those, but um, I'm not sure where we stand as a possibly good a banger. Sort of, I think it's about the 10th of November. Now, Ben Salem came back from his summer break and he was very quickly a, a sick horse. He was. Um, it's the first horse that I've come across with travel sickness, but he arrived here sort of eight o'clock on the Thursday morning. I saw him about an hour later and he looked absolutely magnificent. And by five o'clock that afternoon, he was in trouble and oh, he rushed into the vets. And within sort of 24 hours, he had pneumonia, which then turned into pleurisy. And he was there for three or four weeks. Um, and it took a lot of very hard work and trials with various antibiotics before we got on top of it. But, um, slowly but surely he got there and we're creeping on quietly you saw him canter this morning I mean obviously all plans are on hold I don't I don't know 
you, you have to hope there's been no lasting damage. Um, certainly the early indications are very good, he's enjoying it, and, but we'll just have to creep away very quietly and I've no idea when we'll see him again and, and when we do as to which route we go with him, you know. But um, thankfully he's back and um, let's, let's hope he's okay. It was certainly a pleasant surprise to see him out <laughs> on the gallop this morning. It was lovely. Now, Errol Durr is a horse you've got back from injury um, and you gave him a spin over hurdles. Yes, I mean, he's, he, he had a very good season over fences two years ago, um, culminating with a win in the Henry VIII. Um, and about a year ago now, he unfortunately fractured his pelvis on the gallops, so he, he was off for a long time. We got him back in the spring, and we gave him one run at Aintree, where he was a little bit like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> I think he took charge of chalk halfway down the back and went to the front. And he got a bit tired and still finished fifth. The ground dried up and we decided not to run him again um, he's obviously he'd, he had a mark of 150 over fences it's probably dropped a little bit now but he would be quite hard to place at the moment so we'll continue down the novice hurdle route I'm not sure whether two or two and a half we might start him at two but um, again he, he's a great big horse he'd want, he'd want plenty of cuts and we've got to wait for the rain now although Oak Crick didn't win last season he put up some very good placed efforts Ah yes, I mean obviously we, we we were suffering a little bit after the year before when he won the Grand Annual and the Red Rum, but um, he uh, he was placed in umpteen occasions and he was fifth on the Queen Mother. Um, hard to place. I mean he isn't good enough to take on the best at level weights, and he gets an awful lot of weight if we go down the handicap route. Um, I mean the one thing we did learn last year is he does not get farther than two miles, so we'll we'll plan it accordingly. Um, all things being equal, he'll start off in the. Harden Gold Cup from early November. He usually needs a run though, and I, I wouldn't think this will be any different this year. And then we'll just look at some of the top to the two mile handicaps. Loves Cheltenham, so I'll try and see what we can find round there for him. And as you say, sometimes there are small fields in these these two mile races, and there's very good place money as well I think, as for winning. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to have to do is just try and pick up as much as we can and hope one day you get lucky, you know. But um, he's been a great servant, we're very fond of him, and it'd be good if he could get his head in front at some stage.